Elected officials are afraid. They're not afraid of riots, although they continue to bring up the false specter of them hoping that their liberal sycophants in the media will be able to tip the scales of public opinion their way. On April 5th, uh, 1968, three friends of mine and I uh, took a trip to downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, it was uh, our birthday, and one of the things that took place during the, the 1960s and early 1970s, on your birthday, uh, you could get out of a, off a day of school and register for the draft. This, at that particular time, the, Civil, the, um, the Vietnam War was in, in uh, high gear. Uh, and uh, the draft was, was in place. Today, while you still have to register uh, for, the, for the military, there is, no, there is no draft. Now, the day before, on April 4th, 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. had been assassinated. In a number of cities around the country, the, and, and the Hill District of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, was one of them, uh, there was a great deal of civil unrest. And in, in the uh, Hill District of Pittsburgh, uh, 500, I think 500 and, uh, uh, fires and more than a half million dollars in property damage. There was one death and 926 arrests. Uh, you could see the, the same type of thing happening in Washington, D.C., Washington, in Baltimore, Maryland, in, Ch in Chicago, and other cities across the United States. In, in fact, uh, there was civil unrest in more than 100 cities across the United States in the period from about April 5th, 1968, to about April, April 12th. Um, and the Hill District of Pittsburgh was a predominantly black section of Pittsburgh. It, it wasn't always that way. Uh, it was, a, it was a, a place in Pittsburgh where a lot of immig immigrants came in, just like Pittsburgh is, but there were enclaves of, uh, of, of, of immigrants in, in, uh, in, in the, around the city of Pittsburgh after a period of time, probably in the mid part of the 1950s. Uh, people began to move out of the city, move into the uh, suburban, suburban areas of Pittsburgh. I grew up in a, in a neighborhood with uh, two Irish families, a Polish family across the street, another Italian family across the street, a Jewish family uh, two, two doors down, uh, so uh, and a Ukrainian uh, family uh, up the street. So it was a very diverse area. But uh, what happened in, in the 1960s is that you found uh, a lot of these uh, places where blacks uh, uh, remained, there was a, gr a great deal of political unrest. And when Martin Luther King was assassinated on April 4th, uh, it was like a, a, a cork had, had blown off a, a, off a bottle. And the, the question was, were the, were the blacks justified in doing what they did? Uh, and, of course, I would say most people would claim that they probably weren't. But they could understand the, the political and cultural discontent and could get, get some feeling of, of, uh, of, of justification for what, there was, uh, what they had done. In fact, here's a, here's a quotation. It says, there is some debate about whether or not this riot should be called a riot. That is, when, when blacks burned down businesses and homes and, and so forth in these various cities. These events were indeed precipitated by the assassination of MLK, but were also evidence of larger frustrations amongst the city's African-American population. And so historians, uh, they don't know how to, how to describe that, that period of time. Were they riots? Was it civil dis disobedience? Or was it rebellion? Now, does any of this sound familiar? And why do I bring this up today? Well, I bring it up because uh, those on the left, the media and, and in the political realm in, included, uh, have tried to paint a political and cultural discontent in this country in, in terms uh, that, uh, that, that, that seem to indicate that, that violence is going to, is going to uh, develop out of all of this. And of course, so far you haven't seen any of it. There has been a, a little bit of damage, much of it, of course, on the left, uh, eggs thrown at um, buses, uh, a, a bullet uh, shot at, at a Republican uh, congressman. Um, but there is a great deal of content, discontent in America today, but there, hasn't been any, there haven't been any riots or civil disobedience that, uh, that uh, could be compared to anything that took place in 1968. In the vast majority of cases, 
regular citizens have joined together to voice their opinions about what they believe is happening to their nation. They believe the Constitution is being violated and their freedoms eliminated in the name of social reform. Elected officials have no regard for the oath they took to uphold the Constitution. I'll give you a couple examples of this. Illinois uh, uh, Democrat Congressman Phil Harris said he doesn't worry about the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence when he votes. Now, you can take that two ways, but it seems like in the first part of it is, is the Constitution really isn't an issue here. Uh, he goes on to try to defend himself in a, in a later uh, uh, video uh, broadcast that he made that uh, he, he says this doesn't conflict with the, with the Constitution at all. Well, as, as we'll see here, we know it does. And he is ignorant of both the, the, uh, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States, which he confuses. When Nancy Pelosi was asked, where in the Constitution does Congress have the authority to control health care in America, she laughed. Uh, then there is the self-professed liberal Maxine Waters, who stated that she wants to take over and run the oil companies if they don't do her bidding. And what she admitted in an unguarded moment as socialism. If you go to American Vision's uh, website on the, the April uh, 5th um, article, you, will, you, can, you can click on to watch the video of her. She caught herself in mid-word in saying uh, socialism uh, and had to backtrack, but then she did go on to say that, she, that there was a possibility uh, that the government would take over the oil companies if they don't do her bidding. Now here's something James Madison said, who was the architect of the Constitution. He wrote this in Federalist Number 45. The powers delegated by the proposed Constitution to the federal government are few and defined. Few elected officials pay much attention to what the founders established. They don't keep their oath. Elected officials are afraid. They're not afraid of riots, although they continue to bring up the false specter of them in the, in the media, hoping that they can move public opinion against uh, the, the Tea Party movement. They're afraid of freedom of speech, assembly, the press, and the ballot box. The Tea Party movement is nothing more than the freedom to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Uh, one of those inconvenient truths found in the First Amendment to the Constitution. Congress thrives on voter ignorance and a growing cadre of government workers to keep them perpetually in office. Job growth is all about government job growth. And this, this will have the effect of uh, uh, having a voting constituency. They all, they've already done it in, in the area of, um, of welfare. Uh, you know, there are just certain numbers of people out there who are dependent upon the government, and the, the liberals like that. And now what they're doing in this particular part of the recovery that this administration is taking credit for is increasing the number of government workers. Now, this new health care reform is going to create tens of thousands of new government jobs. Even the IRS is, is uh, saying that they'll need about 16,000 uh, people to enforce all of this. Politicians are panicking, and that's good. Let's keep up the pressure. A few elections uh, won't make much of a difference in the long run if we don't take the loss of our constitutional freedom seriously. Liberals are just waiting for us to riot. It won't happen. I'm not surprised that our government swooped down on a militia-oriented apocalyptic cult and the media have tried to link uh, this example of last day's madness to Tea Partiers. Guilt by association, name calling, and the charge of racism are the tactics of desperation. For more related to this topic, check out God and Government, a biblical and historical study. You will find it at AmericanVision.com.